ensures that the life of every unborn child who has a heartbeat will be saved from the ravages of abortion. That was Texas Governor Greg Abbott back in May signing a law that bans abortions after about six weeks when a fetal heartbeat can be detected and deputizing private citizens to sue anyone for aiding and abetting the procedure. And it's time now for our Sunday group, Jonah Goldberg of The Dispatch, Catherine Lucy, who covers the White House for The Wall Street Journal, and former Democratic Congressman Harold Ford. Jonah, there is quite a debate going on inside conservative circles about the developments this week with the Supreme Court. Uh, I think it's fair to say that, that pro-life groups are thrilled at the idea that a law banning abortions at about six weeks is on the books. But there are other conservatives concerned about the, the general precedent beyond abortion, this idea of laws that would deputize, deputize private citizens to police various kinds of behavior. I think that's exactly right. I mean, what a lot of people don't understand is this SBA was essentially designed almost in a lab like a special key to unlock the defenses against lawsuits that uh, affect abortion vis-a-vis -vis Roe v. Wade. And it could cut up, set up all sorts of troubling precedents if this tactic of sort of depu of going around normal injunctive relief and deputizing citizens becomes more widespread. The other issue that is causing dispute among conservatives and pro-lifers is that there are a lot of people who think that the Dobbs decision coming out the Dobbs case coming out of Mississippi, which is already on the docket, which is a traditional frontal assault at Roe, has pretty good chances. And this may muddy the waters in all sorts of ways and allows a lot of abortion supporters to essentially work the refs for a very long time against the Supreme Court. And let's look, you mentioned the Mississippi case, let's look at where the Supreme Court stands right now on the restricting abortions. Let's put this up on the screen. Court precedents right now prohibit states from banning abortions prior to fetal viability, that's roughly 22 to 24 weeks into pregnancy. But now you have the Texas law, which is on the books, which bans abortions around six weeks. And as you mentioned, Jonah, the court will hear a Mississippi case this term to ban abortions after 15 weeks. Harold, how much trouble is the precedent of Roe v. Wade, which basically protects women's rights to have an abortion, stated women's rights to have an abortion, at least uh, up till viability, how much trouble is Roe v. Wade in right now? Well, there's certainly going to be questions, um, and I think that trouble, we'll have to see how the court decides. I do think Chief Justice Roberts, uh, whose respect for precedent uh, is, 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 is not only long admired by some, uh, but is certainly established. I think the politics of this, unfortunately, is, is just so, so bad on one side for Democrats and perhaps good on the other. Bad in that uh, there are Democrats fuming still over the way some of the Supreme Court justices were rushed through the system. But the other side is you have a Virginia governor's race and you have a Speaker of the House uh, where these is this issue is going to play prominently. And as you look at some of the opponents of the Texas law, I, I would agree with, with, with Jonah's assessment of mudding the waters. Even, even those who oppose Roe, which I don't, but those who oppose Roe have issue with this Texas law. Uh, and again, you've already seen it playing out in the Virginia governor's race with, with, with uh, Terry McAuliffe making it clear his support for reproductive rights and trying to highlight his opponents maybe uh, uh, desire to do what Governor Abbott has done in Texas if he's elected. And let's talk about uh, the politics because President Biden this week, as soon as the ruling came out from the court, and remember, it was not a ruling on the constitutionality of the Texas law. It was a decision not to block the law. And part of it may have been because the way it's written, normally you would enjoin an attorney general or a local prosecutor from enforcing the law, much harder to do when private citizens have been deputized and none of them have enforced the law yet. But here is how President Biden came out after the Texas abortion law ruling by the court this week. Take a look. The most pernicious thing about the Texas law is sort of creates a vigilante system where people get rewards to go out to, anyway. 
And it just seems, I know this sounds ridiculous, almost un-American. Catherine, Catherine, how does the Biden White House view this case and the ruling by the Supreme Court both as policy and also as politics? Well, you saw, Chris, certainly strong words there from the president, you know, saying this is un-American. Um, you know, they're, they're looking at this in a couple of ways. In terms of the policy, uh, the White House has said they are conducting a sort of government-wide review on anything they can do in this moment. Uh, you know, that involves the Department of Justice, Health and Human Services. Uh, they've been meeting with, you know, um, abortion advocates. And they are trying to figure out if there's any next steps they can take from the from the administration. We'll have to see what that unfolds. You know, that obviously is a complicated process. In terms of politics, you know, I've heard from the White House and from Democrats, you know, they do see this as a really major issue now going into the midterms next year. They really think this could galvanize women, particularly you know, women in suburban areas, some of those key congressional districts Democrats would need to hold um, the House. And you've seen that, as, as Harold mentioned, you know, already playing out in, in races around the country, like in Virginia, where, you know, Democrat Terry McAuliffe is talking about how, you know, if a Republican is elected, you know, this, this too could happen in Virginia. So they really see this as a strong issue. And I think you're going to hear a lot more from them on that. Jonah, you know, I've always thought that abortion is an issue that animates the pro-choice, no, the pro-life side more than the pro-choice side, as long as the right to an abortion stands. But if the right to an abortion is lost or if it's severely restricted, I wonder if the politics of this issue doesn't change dramatically and it animates, if they fear that they're losing it or they've lost it, animates the pro-choice side a lot more. I think it's a very good question. I don't think anybody can really appreciate how distorting and, and, and influential Roe v. Wade has been for the last 50 years of American politics. It essentially created the pro-life movement. It became the galvanizing principle of the Republican Party in many respects. And there are a lot of Republican voters who probably are in favor of some sort of compromise on abortion, but feel comfortable voting for Republicans because they think Roe v. Wade is there to stay. If it goes away, that could that could upset everything. It's worth pointing out, though, look at the Democrats in Texas. We heard so much about the voting rights bill um, coming out of Texas. They, you know, they fled to Washington. They did all this press. This bill was passed in May. Democrats in Texas said nothing about it. And that also points to the fact that uh, black and Hispanic voters, they're all unified on the issue of voting rights. They're not all unified on the issue of abortion. Getting rid of Roe wouldn't end abortion in America, but it would completely overturn our political assumptions about American politics. Harold, I want to pick up on something that Catherine said, that at the, the response from the White House, we're going to have a whole of government response, we're going to talk to the various agencies. But in a practical sense, how much can the Biden administration or the very slim Democratic majorities in Congress do? I mean, it seems to me the, the, the obvious things are either you won codify Roe v. Wade, you make it a law of the land, or two, you expand the court so you have a different set of judges. But unless you kill the filibuster, you can't do either of those things. You, you asked a great question, Chris, and I think you answered it uh, pretty well as well. I think that uh, the, the courts is where this, Supreme Court is where this matter is going to be, going to be resolved. And then, of course, could catalyze a, a bunch of uh, and provoke a lot of discussion politically. Do you try to expand the court? Uh, and to your point, do you codify? Which seems like the, code, the codifying effort or path is going to be pursued, but it probably fails in the Senate because President Biden is not, is not, has said he is not going to end the filibuster. So I think politics has created the problem. Politics will likely give us some solution because if you see a number of Democratic governors elected, reelected, if you see a number, if you see the House uh, Democratic majority swell, and if you see Democrats uh, take control of the Senate with even greater, with, with an, a bigger majority, I think that people will have spoken. Uh, but immediately, the court will have this decision, and by this time next year, we will know if this Mississippi law uh, stands or not. Thank you, panel. See you next Sunday. Up next, our Power Player of the Week, Admiral William McRaven, the commander of U.S. Special Forces for some of its most daring operations on what it takes to make a hero.